we go on to the next paper by Dr. Nikhil Balakrishnan. B20247, free paper 1158, deciphering the conundrum of aerosolization during non-contact tonometer. Dr. Nikhil, please. Good afternoon, everyone, judges and my respected peers. Uh, Nikhil, you're I'm just sharing my slides. Yes, yes. Carry on, Nikhil. So my topic for today is deciphering the conundrum of aerosolization during non-contact chronometry. There are no financial interests in the study. Now, we all know that COVID-19 has taken the world aback over the past two years, and the number of cases of COVID-19 are rising worldwide. It is also very well known that COVID spreads through aerosols and also through droplets. And it has been also very well documented. Non-contact tonometry is a daily OPD procedure used worldwide for IOP screening. Almost all of us use it as a regular procedure in our OPD. A published article from 1991 by Britt et al. stated that there was micro aerosol production during NCT. This created a lot of fear in the mind of many people. Hence, many, many body, ophthalmic bodies, including the AIOS, issued guidelines that NCT should be avoided right at the start of the pandemic last year. And also, as we know, as aplanation being a contact procedure should also not be performed. So to allay the fears in everyone's mind, we performed a series of experiments and the research question of ours was, are aerosols actually produced during non-contact tonometry? So we collaborated with the fluid velocimetry team from the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. This institute has recently been adjudged as the number one research institute in the world. So what we did is we had two different kinds of setups. In the first setup, we had a setup called a frontal lighting or a shadow graphy. We used an ultra high resolution camera and a high speed camera, which could capture as many as 20,000 frames per second. We also used a Veritas strobe light, that's a high intensity light, a Shin Nippon NCT tonometer, and the setup with the subject is shown here. The procedure, what we used is known as shadow graphy, which is in combination with a high resolution camera, can image particles of sizes even between 10 to 30 microns. Our second setup was a fluorescein setup where we used a DSLR camera with a bandwidth of 527 nanometer, a blue LED excitation light, a fluorescein stained eye, and finally also a night mode camera to capture the images. NCT was performed in all our subjects, 10 subjects each, at three different point times, one in a normal eye condition, one after installation of a drop of lubricant, and third after installation of two drops of lubricants. So what were the results of our study? We noticed that in normal eye conditions, there was absolutely no aerosol generation whatsoever. This was seen not only on the shadow graphy technique demonstrated here, but also on the high speed imaging and the nightscape mode. Whereas after installation of one drop of lubricant, we observed both in the frontal lighting and shadow graphy that there is minimis, minimal amount of aerosol generation seen. This, these facts are also furnished by on the smartphone nightscape mode and the high speed imaging where you see on the nose bridge of the patient a few micros, uh, a minimal amount of splatter. Uh, we also performed the uh, experiment after installation of two drops of lubricant. And what we saw here was highly startling that yes, there was copious amount of aerosol generation, which also traversed back to the pneumatic port of the NCT. And which is also being seen here, where we see the copious amount of splatter even went and reached up to the NCT machine. We also used mathematical modeling to compute how far that these aerosols and droplets could traverse in a room in two different conditions, one where the air conditioner was on and two in a low, low floor air, uh, room. So what did we finally conclude? We concluded that there are absolutely no aerosol production in normal eye conditions and hence uh, NCT can be performed in all patients, post in all different patients in the OPD. Two, there is a mild amount of splatter of aerosols observed on installation of one drop of lubricant. Hence, people with gen genetically more watery eyes, should uh, NCT should be avoided in them and also avoided in patients immediately postoperative. 
and there is profuse amount of splatter seen if two drops of uh, lubricant are instilled and hence one, one should not instill any kind of drop in the eye prior to an NCT procedure. There may be a contamination of the NCT in case of profuse aerosolization and hence there should be a regular disinfection of the NCT between two patients. What new does our study add? It was the first to use shadowgraphy techniques and high-speed photography to demonstrate aerosol generation. It was the first study to demonstrate that no visible or invisible aerosols are generated during yeah. the NCT procedure in normal eye conditions. And finally, it affirmed that NCT should only be avoided in conditions with watery eyes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank uh, you, I would request the judges to ask your questions, please. Yes, Dr. Susan. Sorry, I, my Any question is, uh, yeah, can you hear Yes, me? please go ahead. My question is, uh, you said that you used a lubricant, uh, you know, and post-lubricant you found the dispersion of the droplets. Uh, yes. My question is, uh, it, I think, would it also not depend on the viscosity of the lubricant that's used, uh, you know, how much is spattered as well as the distance traveled would also depend on the droplet size that's created, which again would depend on the type of uh, lubricant used, which may also be different from the actual tears of a patient because they are not likely to be as viscous. So okay. was any, so was any control done for that? Was any, you know, mechanism done to figure out the effect yes. of the viscosity and different types of lubricants uh, versus the actual uh, consistency of the TFM? Yes, ma'am. So we also, what we did is we used uh, a lubricant of two dis different viscosities, that is 0.5% and 1% of CMC. And uh, all our results, which are here published, were seen that it was basically in around about 0.5% CMC is what the results which, we have show, which I've shown you right now. And as you rightly said, ma'am, that in this case, the tears being more viscous. And even in that, we saw that, uh, that there was in minimal splatter on only one drop of installation, only on two drops we saw a large amount of splatter and like you rightly said ma'am our normal tears are less viscous than that so uh, definitely the findings would be uh, confirmed in the same right, thanks any other questions so if there are no other questions then uh, um, yes please was there a control group where saline was just plain saline was installed PSS or something like that? that? Uh, no, ma'am. We did not use any, uh, none of the, no control group with saline was used. It was just the lubricant of 0.5% and 1%. ma'am. And obviously the normal tier, the normal eye condition where there was uh, no drops added. Welcome to the study. Thanks. Uh, use of shadowgraphy and all the instruments is good. Thank you, ma'am.